What's up, YouTube? It's time for review of the new Body Count record, Bloodlust, out this past Friday, March 31st. This is album number six from Ice-T's metal band, who I feel are really important to propping up that kind of delicate bridge between metal and hip-hop. Because, let's face it, people still have a pretty sour taste in their mouth after new metal bands like Limp Bizkit. And when you listen to the two genres today, they could not sound more mutually exclusive most of the time. When you listen to 21 Savage and Revocation, it just sounds like these are worlds apart. But for me, metal and hip-hop are literally my two favorite genres of music, so I am always pushing to hear them mixed together in new creative ways. I think that they have way more in common than people realize, but that's an entire other rant, probably an entire other rant series that I'll do eventually on this channel. But I'm always trying to shine a spotlight on moments where that fusion does work. There are some newer up and coming metal core bands that are actually incorporating rapping into their sound, whether it be from Ashes to New or Fire from the Gods, but I'm not really into these bands at all. To me, they come off a little more mall core-ish, a little more Linkin Park, rather than Rage Against the Machine or Tech 9 or other artists that have fused the genre as well. But it's funny, because when people hear that Ice-T has a metal band, I feel like most people assume that it's a, a rapper trying out metal thing, but that is not the case at all. Body Count is, and has been for over 25 years now, a genuine, authentic, heavy band that just happened, just happened to have a rapper as their front man, which gives them a more unique musical voice. But they totally fit within the genre, because when you break it down, that first Body Count record, which came out in 92, it wasn't too far off from what groups like Biohazard were doing around the same time, which was mixing metal and hardcore with tough talk and urban street themes. In fact, Ice-T says on this very album that Body Count was meant to be a mix of Suicidal Tendencies, Slayer, and Black Sabbath. And when you listen to that first Body Count record and subsequent records, you can hear a little bit of hardcore punk, a little bit of thrash, a little bit of groove metal. So Body Count is an undeniable heavy metal band. They don't deserve any sort of rap metal, rap rock, new metal label at all. And to that effect, what is absolutely thrilling and kind of surprising about this new album Bloodlust is that Body Count have made, beyond a shadow of a doubt, their most metal record. This LP ups the metal, ups the heaviness, just cranks the knobs in ways that I did not see coming. I was genuinely shocked when I heard the, the devastating blast beats in the bridge section to the song Walk With Me, which features some brutal guest vocals from Randy Bly of Lamb of God. This song is just balls to the fucking wall. It's a mix of Lamb of God style riffs, actually, and a little bit of thrash, and just takes on this dark and sinister tone that has really been absent from a lot of Body Count's previous music. As does the song All Love Is Lost for a bit, which features Max Cavalera from Sepultura. This one has actually a bridge section as well that just takes on a bit of like an evil tinge to it, where a couple of the chord choices are behemoth-esque and dip their pinky toe into black metal. And it was just really awesome to hear Body Count sample that musical flavor. I, for one, would love to see them explore this sound more, because it made for such an interesting mix, given that the rest of the song is these simple breakdowns and simple mosh riffs with Ice-T just angrily ranting over them. So this just abrupt transition was unexpected. It was exciting. But just because I've highlighted some of the more unexpectedly aggressive moments on this album doesn't mean I'm trying to say this is like a total stylistic departure from the body count that was on their last record, Manslaughter. Because my very favorite track on this album is the song The Ski Mask Way, which is really the body count that I've come to expect. The chorus just has this muscular headbanger of a riff with these gang vocals over it, which are just begging for a live sing-along. I gotta get paid! With the Ski Mask Way and with a lot of the songs on this album, I can't emphasize enough how the lyrics, which here are topically very hip-hop, are as direct and intense and confrontational as the chugging riffs that are behind them. That's something that I think bringing a little bit of hip-hop into metal really adds to the genre, because metal lyrics can get very cryptic very fantastical at times and kind of lose touch with reality and relatability, so shit like this is very refreshing. Then the following track, This Is Why We Ride, is another top track for me. There's so much to love here, whether it's those police sirens that kick in with the synchronized double bass and guitars, or it's the verses with very cleverly layered electric guitars and clean guitars, or it's the bridge section where this guitar solo just really elegantly slides in 
under this dramatic monologue from Ice-T. And it's a song that proves that metal is as fitting a soundtrack to visions of hood violence as a banging trap beat or a 90s boom bap instrumental is. Which sort of brings me to what I love most about this album. Lyrically, this album is a riveting contrast between denouncing and glorifying violence. It really is a fascinating exploration into the human relationship with violence, which is a very complicated one. On one hand, the album is called Bloodlust, and Ice-T openly admits to getting off on violence. On the title track, he refers to it as a sickness, and then on the song Here I Go Again, he has a lot of fun going into like serial killer fantasy mode in a way that you could say is either influenced by like early ghetto boys and the horrorcore side of rap music, or you could say it's influenced by death metal like Cannibal Corpse and Six Feet Under. Then on Walk With Me, he talks about how he's all smiles during the day, but when he writes late at night, he's a murdering sociopath, just basically admitting that his mind has this inclination towards darkness and violence. And lastly, on This Is Why We Ride, he talks about the need for revenge. And in a way, this song is an explanation for why people continue the cycle of violence in the streets. It's all about the need for revenge that comes from the hurt of losing one's own. And so the cycle just continues to perpetuate itself as a family member, a friend gets killed, and just this need for revenge to close your own wound comes about. But on the other hand, one of this album's main themes is a denunciation of violence in the form of social commentary on politics, on the matter of cop shootings, the Black Lives Matter movement, which are topics he explores in, of course, No Lives Matter, Black Hoodie, Civil War, which features an Endgame-style cameo from Dave Mustaine of Megadeth. It's kind of funny to think that the guy who's infamous for singing Cop Killer is speaking on these issues like 25 plus years later, isn't it? But on this subject, these in-your-face, pointed, reality-check type lyrics from a prominent black musician are extremely important and will continue to be until this shit gets resolved. So it's that duality, that complicated relationship that humans have with violence that's being explored on here that makes this album so powerful. It's really making me look inward and think about what violence means to me because I, I see a lot of these contradictions in myself. I mean, the catchiest song on the album is the one called Bloodlust, and the violent imagery in some of these songs is what makes them so good and so enjoyable. Speaking of violence, there's also a cover of Slayer's Raining Blood on this album, which continues with the theme of body count updating classic songs. Their last album had covers of 99 Problems and Institutionalized, and with this Slayer cover, I have huge praise for producer Will Putney's production on here. It just, it sounds slick and modern, but still powerful. It sounds like what you want Raining Blood to sound like in 2017. The only problem here for me is Ice-T's vocals. I don't feel like they work. Raining Blood and Slayer riffs in general, they do need that Tom Araya sneer, that vicious sneer that he had. And I think people really underestimate how important Tom Araya's vocals were to those classic Slayer albums. So to me, this cover is just okay, but it is a nice little intermission in the track list, I suppose. There's not a single song on this album that I straight up don't like, though. I think the rant format of the song Black Hoodie doesn't allow for much to go on musically underneath it, aside from a couple decent riffs and an ending that's pretty cool with wah guitars and a tom groove. And you could definitely find fault with the almost teenage diary type lyrics on the song All Love Is Lost, but for some reason they don't bother me. Ice is just so angry and the riffs are there, so he sells it. But this is a fucking awesome record. Like I've discussed, it's unique. It's way heavier than Body Count's previous efforts. It's got some real thought-provoking lyrical themes. And it goes without saying, this goes right to the top of the fucking workout playlist. Oh my god, is this a phenomenal gym album. I don't expect everybody to like it, because Ice-T's vocal style and lyrical topics are pretty different than what metalheads are accustomed to. But if you're looking to hear a metal record that's a little outside of the box, but still authentically heavy, this might be for you. Bloodlust gets an 8 out of 10 for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.